Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Yoo-hoo, David! You home already? Of course I'm home. Where'd you think I'd be? Where have you been? I even called your mother. Oh, that's too bad. I have a surprise and I don't want you to see it. What's this about a surprise? Come on, confess. What have you been up to now? Why should you start off assuming that I've been up to something? By now, I know the symptoms. That's the house phone. I'll answer it. I'll get it. I'm right here. I'll answer it. I'm sure it's for me. Your surprises get pretty complicated, don't they? Hello? Yes, that's right. Yes, Fritz, I did. I'm waiting for it. Have them bring it up. Bring what up? You're more curious than a ten-year-old boy. You're a specialist in ten-year-old boys. Living with you, I'm getting to be. Now, will you please cooperate and lock yourself in the bedroom till I tell you to come out? Lock myself in the bedroom? Yes, I want to have everything arranged before you see her. That's the second time this surprise has been given a sex. I want to know what kind of a her is being delivered by them and must be arranged before I'm surprised by her. Oh, here it is now. Please go in the bedroom. Now, her has become it. David, please go in the bedroom and close the door. No. All right. And don't dare peek. I'm coming. The men from the auction rooms, Mrs. Norton. Bring it right in. And don't make any noise. Lady, you don't move nothing like this without making noise. This here bookcase is about the heaviest piece of furniture I ever had anything to do with. It isn't a bookcase. It's a Queen Anne secretary. It is. The only secretary I ever saw at Scritch. It's not that kind of a secretary. Well, this secretary has glass doors and weighs 500 pounds. Where do you want it, lady? Um, um, over there against the wall. I think. Lady, don't think, no, this ain't something to be tried out in different places. Against the wall, then. You sure? Well, it seems to be the only place. But uh, if you don't like him there, we move him around for you. But not with me, lady, much as I wouldn't like to. I got other deliveries to make. All right, Hyman, get strong. My name is Fritz. Okay, Hyman, easy does it. <laughs> Be careful of the chandelier. Uh, lady, no matter what you pay for this at the auction, you got yourself a bargain. Uh, a big bargain. Uh, watch out, mister. Hey, what's going on? Sounds like you were fading down a hippopotamus. I'm coming out. David, if you come out now, I'll never forgive you. We're almost ready. No, he ain't, lady. Hey, stand up. Hold it a minute. Uh, Fritz. All right, Hyman. Lady, we're crossed up. This here bookcase don't want to go against the wall. Why not? There's plenty of room between the windows. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of room between the windows, but there ain't enough room between the floor and the ceiling. Between the floor and the... Ceilings to floors is eight feet in this apartment. I think this is maybe uh, eight foot six. That's it. This here bookcase wasn't made for no New York apartment. This here bookcase is a secretary, and it's got to go against the wall. If it's got to, lady, you better cut off the legs. Oh, cut the legs off a of Queen Anne secretary? That's sacrilege. Well, I don't know about that, lady, but it's practical. Uh, of course, you could chop a hole in the ceiling. The truckman is joking. The truckman ain't joking, either. My no, name no, no, is... Don't tell me. I got your name right on the tip of my tongue. Uh, Hoyman. Fritz. Funny. When I say it, it sounds like Hoyman. Please. You'll have to get it in place for me. Lady, it's like I said. Only a magician or an axe can do this job. I think only a magician with an axe. Best we can do is get it out for you. All right. Quick, before my husband sees it, I'll tell him it was all a mistake. Only I can't make it, uh, rather, I can't take it out for you today. 
Company rules is that the truck must go empty to the garage. But it can't stay here. Where will we put it? Now, you better leave it where it is. Uh, ease it down. <laughs> That's it on its side. There. But it's, it's blocking up the doorway. Well, you figure out a place in this room where it don't block some doorway. Uh, look, lady, you sleep on it. And if you want, we should take it back tomorrow and uh, give us a call. But listen, you can't now, go... Sorry, lady. Rules is rules. Mm. A very comic man, I don't think. It's a beautiful piece of furniture, Mrs. Norton. Too bad it's so big. Uh, there's maybe some way I can help you. Hey, am I to be kept in the bedroom all night? Won't I even get any dinner? I'm coming out. No, 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 don't come out yet. I'm coming in. No, Fritz, I'm afraid there's nothing you can do. Uh, Mr. Norton's home may be here and I together, no, Fritz, but... No, I'm afraid this is something that Mr. Norton will want to take up with me alone, I'm afraid. You want I should uh, go, then? Yes, Fritz, I want you should go. I was surprised. I said it taking an awfully long time to hatch. That's because it's a bigger surprise than I thought it was going to be. David, you love me. What's that got to do with it? Everything. Do you love me very much? Mm, under advice of counsel, I refuse to commit myself. Well, make up your mind, because... I'm going to need an awful lot of love and understanding. Now, darling, come to the point. It's the end of a long, long day. I'm starting out with a handicap. All right, here goes. David, I bought something. Well, what is it? You know, we haven't got a bookcase yet. No. And you know we've been talking about building shelves around the walls. And? And you can't take bookshelves with you when you move, so... So... I bought a gorgeous walnut Queen Anne secretary. Now, now, don't interrupt, darling. It's a genuine antique, early 18th century, and completely original. That is, except for one of the back legs. It's a museum piece. Mm-hmm. Where did you find it? At a... at the auction gallery. Claudia, you went to an auction sale by yourself? Now, darling, I just... Now, just... how much did you bid on it? I got it for nothing, $145. And an antique? Full of wormholes. I tell you, it's a museum piece. It said so in the catalog. Uh, there's something wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it except that it belongs in a museum. That's no great drawback. That's what you think. Come on, then. Let, let's look at it. A good Queen Anne secretary is nothing to sneeze at. David, wait a minute. Don't go yet. Kiss me. Hold me tight. There. How's that? That'll probably be the last kiss I'll get for years. Come on. Hey. Hey, what's the idea of blocking up the doorway like this? You'll just have to climb over it, darling. Well, why didn't those lazy truckmen stand it up against the wall? David, can't you guess? The whistle blew and their day's work was done. No, guess again. I don't get it. David, it's this silly ceiling. Oh, it wouldn't be my silly wife by any chance. Good heaven. It's an elephant. I guess that's why it was so cheap. Yeah, I guess that's why it was. Claudia, if I ever catch you going to another auction sale, I'll... At the price, it was a gift. You should always look gift horses in the mouth and... Anybody with half an eye could see that this one has a pretty tall mouth. But you've got to admit that it's beautiful. I'll lie down on the floor and have a look at it sideways. Darling, you're very sweet to take it this way. I'm not sweet. I'm furious with you. No, you're not. You're laughing. <laughs> David, it's a lot of little things like this that add up to make a marriage. Or breaking it. You don't call this... this... This thing, a little thing. You know, darling, someday I I may wring your neck. That might be nice. Oh, that must be Mama. She was on her way over. Come in, come in, Mama. The, the door's, door's not locked. Come on, Mama. Something's blocking it. Well, you must have been drinking, Mrs. Brown. I can't imagine what you're imagining. I'm imagining nothing. Very well. If you won't move it, I'll manage to squeeze through. I'm getting used to it in this household. <laughs> Very hospitable, I must say. Well, what? What's that? What's what? That, that thing there. I, I don't see anything. What's she talking about, Claudia? Come on in, Mother. Well, what do you expect me to do? Climb it or... 
jump over it. She really thinks something is blocking the way. The poor thing, is she often like this? You two never get tired of your own humor, do you? Never. This is the surprise, I suppose. Yes, do you like it? Stand it up and I'll tell you. But that's the surprise, and anyway, we don't want to stand it up. Why not? Oh, it's been standing up for a couple of hundred years. It wants to rest before it goes over to your house. To my house? Yes, it's sort of a present, sort of. You should be very grateful it's a museum piece. My small apartment is not a museum. But it has high ceilings. I fail to get the connection. You will. And it's beautiful. Think of all the books it'll hold. I don't need anything to hold books, thank you. You can store jellies in it. I have no jelly. Make some, then. You know, if she wasn't so lazy, David, she'd make a lot of jelly. Certainly she would. I'm going home. Now, wait a minute, Mother. She's your daughter, and you've got to assume your share of the responsibility. I will not. You married her. She's yours. Oh, right? but I've got to go to Connecticut early tomorrow. And it's too late to do anything about this tonight. Are you talking about me or the bookcase? Both. Can't you send it back? My wife or the bookcase? <laughs> It'd be easier to get rid of my wife. She's not so bulky. <laughs> Besides, Queen Anne came from an auction, and it's not so easy to return things to auction. Just sell it over again for us, won't they? Don't worry, don't worry. But I do worry. People who get rid of white elephants aren't too pleased to see them come back to roost. You're getting your figures of speech awfully mixed up. <laughs> and another reason I'm not happy is the thought of you going near an auction alone. Well, she doesn't have to go. Just send it down and have them sell it for you at any time. <gasps> I wouldn't dream of it. I want to be there. David, I know what you mean. She'll probably buy it back again, because she can get it cheaper. It'll be even a bigger bargain. You get the general idea, Mrs. Brown. I think I'd better go with her. Say, how do I know I can trust you? Don't pay any attention to her, Mama. You and I will have a lovely time at the auction tomorrow. Now, come on in and help me fix supper. Well, how do I get over this barricade? Just climb. Climb right on over. I can. Of course you can. Just make believe it's the Alps. Altitude doesn't agree with me. I get dizzy. Your daughter gets dizzy at sea level now. Now, don't be a coward. Give me your hand. I'll help you. I'm not happy. Oh, you're doing fine. Up. Sit daisy now. Put your foot up there. There you are. No, I'm not too steady. Yes, you are now. Well, how do you know what I am? Well, you're perfectly all right now. Up through the air with the greatest of ease. The dang old girl on the flying trip. Hey, look out. I'll catch you. Look out. Watch where you're stepping. Hey, don't go through the glass door, Mama. Oh, don't tell me don't. I did. Oh, I can't look. Well, it isn't hurt much. Just one pane of glass shattered. I wasn't thinking about the old secretary. I was thinking about Mama. Well, you can come out from behind your hands now. Mama is all right. Mama's just fine. Her nerves are slightly shattered, but Mama's just fine. An evening with the Nortons has certainly put a lot of age into this poor old secretary. It's put a lot of age into this poor old mother-in-law. Don't you like us? I love you. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. With the first nip of frost, folks get more ambitious about everything, including entertaining. Dad thinks maybe he'll have a few of the boys over for a game. Junior wants to invite some of his crowd over for music and fun. And you get out the pencil and paper to write out a tantalizing menu for your own special party. But one thing heads every list for any party, and that's Coca-Cola. Keep a supply of Coke in your refrigerator. It's the very heart of your hospitality on any occasion. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.